you know, we realized actually only a few months after we started building Geyser that Kickstarter and GoFundMe were only accessible in 30 countries. So like if you're in Brazil or Nigeria, you couldn't create a project and raise money on GoFundMe. And, and we realized like, that's bizarre. <laughs> so Bitcoin really, really like saves, saves mainly that because at the end of the day in, in the West, we still, we still do have a lot of these tools and they're pretty, pretty powerful and useful, but in, in other parts of the world where the banking system isn't as, as sophisticated. And then also it's not even just that, but the, the a lot of the financial infrastructure that is that exists today, PayPal, Stripe, there's sort of re, there's massive regulatory capture and they're not really allowed to extend their services beyond because they're deemed to be high risk. Right. So it's just a, it's just an insane way of just perpetrating financial apartheid, right? It's really kind of dividing the world into different camps saying, no, you cannot use digital money. And now we have Bitcoin. It's like, well, now everyone gets digital money, <laughs> thankfully. This is the Freedom Footprint Show, a Bitcoin philosophy show with Knut Svanholm and me, Luke DeWolf. And we love to expand our freedom footprint. We hope you do too. The best way to do that is, of course, to try to emit as much freedom dioxide as possible. The best tool we have for doing that is, of course, Bitcoin. Before we dive into today's show, we'd just like to tell you a little bit about how you can support us. First, to support us directly with Bitcoin, visit our Geyser page at geyser.fund slash project slash freedom. Or you can send us sats directly to freedom at geyser.fund. And for the month of February, Geyser is matching all contributions up to a total of 500,000 sats. This is the best time to support the show and get literally double value for your sats. You can also support us as you listen by listening to the podcast on Fountain. The app is available on Apple and Android, and you can stream sats or send a boost. It's the easiest way to support the show just by listening normally. And if you don't care too much about Luke, you can always visit knutsvanom.com, where you can buy my fabulous wine, my books, and a t-shirt or two. And if you don't feel like supporting your fellow Bitcoiners at all, at least like, subscribe, and brush your teeth. But seriously, that stuff actually helps. It would be great if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the videos, send us a comment or leave us a review if you're listening on Apple or Spotify or something like that. All this stuff really helps the show seriously. So yeah, we'd appreciate that if you can do that. Click the damn bell. So thanks for tuning into the show and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Welcome back to the Freedom Footprint Show, the Bitcoin philosophy show with Knut Svanholm and me, Luke the Pseudofin. And today, our guest is Metamic, co-founder and CEO of Geyser, the Bitcoin crowdfunding platform that we're happy to be using as the best way to support our show. And we're thrilled to have um, Mick on here to, to tell us all about the, the platform and his, his Bitcoin story and all this. So Mick, welcome to the Freedom Footprint Show. Uh, so good to be here. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, th thanks Newt, for inviting me. It's really an honor. Yeah, good to see you, Mick. We, we haven't seen you since uh, Lugano, I, I believe. I think it was, yeah, I think you're right. Lugano was the, was, the, was the last time. I still remember the first time we met. We were uh, somewhere in some uh, street in Riga, uh, discovering weird plants on the side corner of the street. I don't know if you oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when Izzy, <laughs> Izzy yeah. was taking a piss. In a, yeah. in a dark corner somewhere and he comes out with this cannabis plant thingies <laughs> right. and he found the in the in the wild so he finds a two meter tall <laughs> cannabis plant just growing in the wild so yeah it was weird <laughs> yeah that was a really good introduction to to you guys oh yeah. Uh, yeah 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 oh uh, that was uh, that was a fun night i remember that that was a long night uh my memories from that night are blurry to say the least <laughs> Yeah, but all good fun. Yeah, and uh, how how is Geyser doing this these days? Like, well, what's going on at Geyser? Yeah, so Geyser is we're always building, always just listening to users, always solving bugs, always sort of you know making the platform better. But uh, and lately we've been uh, just uh, doing just a bit of research in terms of how can we move Geyser forward and what's our what's our broader vision and where are we going. And um, we definitely see a, a need for a more um, kind of a community-based approach. You know, guys, is a place where people, you know, send the creators, send their their fans to to support them. Obviously, as you guys know, <clears throat> but there's the potential to to make it also more interactive with the, you know, making it a, a place where you know special uh, contributors get to have special rights to get access to certain 
certain information, certain uh, uh, certain content, um, and kind of creating more of a feeling of community for for the creators. So yeah, sort of exploring uh, where where we want to go next, and we're really excited to be yeah supporting. I think the hundreds of, of creators that are earning in Bitcoin, and um, yeah, it's it's really it's really uh, an honor to be supporting this 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 community and this uh, this. Uh, uh, this niche community that is the Bitcoin community, but our, our aim is to also bring this the tools that Bitcoin enables to, to the broader market as well. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, like Geyser is a uh, crowdfunding platform uh, similar to Patreon, but uh, with Lightning payments enabled. So you connect your your Lightning wallet to, to Geyser and you can get uh, uh, funded by the community. Right, right. Yeah, more like probably more or less so between GoFundMe and Kickstarter because you can also sell rewards on Geyser. Yeah. Um, but Patreon is a good uh, is a good point because that's sort of trying to move also uh, in, in 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 that direction in providing subscriptions and um, and uh, hidden content uh, for uh, paywall content for for subscribers and so forth as well. Yeah, and we we started talking a, a bit about this b- before we uh, hit record here. But the, during the Canadian trucker protest, <laughs> a bit more than a year back now, right? Look, w- when the hell was that? Like two years. The time goes yeah, too two fast. Two years ago now, yeah. Twenty-two, yeah. Yeah, so so that's when you guys st- you had just started, and uh, this is when they they shut down all the funding for the truckers via G- GoFundMe. So that the Canadian population got a, a a reminder that the money in their bank accounts are not really theirs because they can't use it the, as they please. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it's not permissionless by any definition of the word. So they they uh, hopped onto something called Tallycoin, uh, which is another sort of uh, crowdfunding platform for Bitcoiners, I guess, but more on chain variant of Geyser. That's right. Yeah, so so when when that whole thing happened, Geyser was just a, in its infancy. We had been born uh, just a week before in a pilot. It was just a pilot project. There was only one project on Geyser, but it was a little inf- input field where you could say, "Hey, you have an idea, you know, drop your name, drop your idea, and we'll, we'll you know get you onboarded." Because we just wanted to see is this something that people even would want? Like, do people care about this stuff? Um, and so we released something super quickly uh, in just a matter of a few months. And we got in a week more than like a hundred, not a week, maybe the first month we got 150 to 100 requests for creators wanting to use Geyser as a platform. And, and that was for us like a signal that, okay, there's, there's something here. Uh, but on the first week of being live, the whole trucker stuff happened with, with, uh, GoFundMe. Uh, well, actually what happened is like, uh, the, the whole trucker company happened. You had GoFundMe raising funds, right? And we're like, oh my God, this is, Incredible. And then a few weeks later, they shut down. They, f- they froze. They froze the funds, right? Because people have to understand: when you create a project on GoFundMe, you receive the funds in GoFundMe. GoFundMe uh, uses a third-party bank uh, to custody the funds in GoFundMe. GoFundMe is essentially like a bank account, and and that's why they could just freeze those funds. And they said, okay, we're going to freeze these funds and reuse them for other projects. And people were like. You know, don't do that. They got sued, um, and then eventually, I think they give the funds back to the, the funders. Uh, but not only did they freeze the GoFundMe funds, they also froze bank accounts of those who sent the money. And I have friends who sent ten dollars, and their bank accounts was frozen for a week. So imagine that. How bizarre is that? And um, and so that's why we had built Geyser uh, in non custodial way, right? Built on top of Voltage, built on top of um, uh, of your own node, essentially, you could connect your own node and receive Bitcoin on chain and on Lightning to be you know, fully censorship resistant, and that went really well for 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 a while. Um, but yeah, that, at that point, Tallycoin, you could essentially send donations on chain, and you can still can it's still a, a functional app um, a platform that allows you to, to do donations on chain. I think also Lightning, if you connect like a separate a uh, service called, um, goodness, I cannot remember the, the service they use, but yes, yeah, sort of have to kind of do a few more hops. Uh, and yeah, so and, and I think it worked really well. I think there's um, BDC Sessions, right, who was one of the key guys behind the whole initiative, uh, has some has done some podcasts and talked about his experience and basically says, like, I think as soon as the government started shutting down, he said, like, 
you know, I was scared for my life. I just still, I, I shot on the project itself, um, uh, in order to just be, be sure that this one, you know, was going to create, create troubles for him as well. So I, the best way to do in these types of ultra sensitive scenarios is to use a, a fully, you know, user own node, um, uh, like you can do at Geyser, or you can also, you know, use um, you know, BDC uh, pay server, right? A really good uh, censorship resistant censorship resistant option. And yeah, it's it's um, it's it can be can get tough, right? In terms of government government seizing funds. So, but Geyser, after having a node approach, which is fully non non custodial and censorship resistant, we decided look. There's actually still massive limitations here. Like running a node is not simple. Most people were like, no, thank you. Uh, I have to kind of manage channels to get a 1 million sat donation. I need to have 1 million sats in lightning channels and I don't have anything. Like how do I get started if I don't have anything? Um, voltage is great, but I still have to pay $10 a month to get that going. So, so, that, so now we figured out a solution to just allowing creators to link their lightning address from their Lightning wallet and just start receiving the funds directly in there. And uh, there's a lot of technical complexity with Lightning, but there's, there's one thing that really works is custodial Lightning. So it, it really, really, it, it really does work with all its limitations. I'm not saying that's good. In fact, I definitely recommend to move your funds uh, out of custodial wallets as much as possible, but it really works in terms of usability, in terms of mass adoption. So yeah, so that's worked really well and that really has helped us scale. Now we have over a hundred, New creators every month joining Geyser. We have, you know, over, uh, you know, sometimes we, we reach uh, three bitcoins in transactions per month. So there's a lot of activity. Oh, nice. So, so is there an on-chain option as well in Geyser? Yeah. So you can fund on chain, and then what we do is we swap it over to Lightning. So you receive everything in one place because we don't like the idea of having you receive your on-chain Bitcoin in one wallet and you receive your Lightning payments in another wallet. Instead, we kind of reconcile it all over into your Lightning wallet. Okay. Uh, yeah, a couple of things come to mind here. Uh, it's so it's so funny how how history is playing out uh, right before our eyes, and we're in the middle of it, just seeing these things happen. Like one thing that comes to mind, uh, the, 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 it's this steep learning curve, right? When when people realize what's actually going on. So you had uh, when the Ukraine Russia war started, there was a guy. I don't remember if it was a Russian or a Ukrainian, but someone trying to get out with a briefcase full of a, a, a gold bar, a, a, a stack of dollars, a stack of euros, and a stack of rubles. And he, of course he gets uh, stuck in customs and the customs officer takes it all, or the, <laughs> the lion's share of it anyway. And the comments under the tweet and under the picture is just, look at this idiot who can't remember 12 words. Right. And people are going to learn that lesson, right? <laughs> And the second thing is the the of course the trucker thing when when people realize that their bank accounts weren't theirs, and the, the, then they they learn how to Bitcoin pretty fast after a thing like that happens. So so it's just so and I I think where we as I know I am as a as a hardcore Bitcoiner uh, a bit biased and I think that like things are already developed and we've got this already, but. We're so early, like these things are just being built, and you're one of the 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 apps that are literally changing the world at the moment, even though it's uh, baby steps at first. Uh, still, three Bitcoin is is three Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Look, it's it's it's. You're right. It's gonna it's gonna take a lot of learning. It's gonna take a lot of painful lessons, and the the, the challenges ahead are, are not. And then there's technical challenges too, right? Like non-custodial lightning is challenging but uh, uh, my my personal perspective and i am super you know super also hardcore bitcoin maxi like i i, I love you know i'm for for self, self um self-sovereignty not censorship resistance but if we want to onboard the world there will have to be some compromises potentially and it might take us decades to figure out a non-custodial solution that works at scale right because even a non-custodial solution uh, a lightning solution um, wouldn't actually scale to more than 100 million people. So custodial, I think we're going to have to reconcile with the idea that there may be things like Bitcoin banks that custody funds uh, for, for a lot of people, but people have to 
still and and, and as we develop the tools that are non-custodial that are that are more yeah, that are more censorship resistant but these are being developed like there's arc i'm really interested in seeing how that goes there's um all sorts of super smart people that can find the ways forward but in any case bitcoin is still better so like the way that i see it is custodial bitcoin is still better than non-custodial shit coins or yeah or custodial fiat you know what i mean exactly that that's the way i see it too like uh it's unfortunate that we have to use custodial but still your your stack is the important thing and that you run your on-chain node and then you can run custodial and you can have inflows and outflows there never if it becomes too much at some point just put them in cold storage do a one-time payment and then just keep it as a i mean that's the way i do it when i go to conferences and stuff like i i uh sell some t-shirts or books or whatever and then i get a little pocket money for you know steaks and beers and whatnot so the, it, it and it works and it, you know it's all there's always a trade-off between convenience and security right yeah yeah, and I'm not at all suggesting we should be complacent, right? Or, or that we should stack st uh, our stats in in Wallet or Satoshi. <laughs> not at all. Uh, people, sh but but we also need some easy first steps for for a lot of these newbies that that need to get started. It, it's tricky though. The one thing I noticed is like I I used to sometimes uh, I recommend products, apps, or and stuff. And, and in hindsight, I wish I hadn't. Like blockchain.info, for instance, in back in 2017, I recommended it to everyone, and it fucking sucks. Uh, they well, they went total shitcoin casino and KYC and crap. Uh, and then I recommended Moon. I still like Moon, but Moon shut down their Lightning channel. So if they got like a 10 euros in the Lightning payment just to check it out, that money is gone now because they don't have their Lightning channels anymore. And uh, so so I'm like, uh, and they come to me and ask me okay what happened and i'm like uh yeah they shut down their light lightning channels didn't you get the memo like aren't you aren't you <laughs> like following every single bitcoin person on twitter that was blue wallet can you just <laughs> yeah, blue wallet. you said yeah moon. You said i said moon I, okay that was blue wallet sorry sorry moon i i, I love moon i love wallet of satoshi i love still love blue wallet as well <laughs> but uh still um i mean a noob wouldn't understand that they need to keep it to uh, uh, keep updated about their custodial app. They they expect it to be as safe as a bank account, and well, <laughs> there's a bias there too. Too, they think their bank account is safer than the, than it is. But yeah, still, I prefer custodial Lightning to to fiat custodial fiat. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we're we're going with this. Um, so guys are what's coming up ahead like so what's 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 on the roadmap like, what, what do you see, envision in, for the future yeah so uh, yeah so so we for this year we really focused on making the funding experience seamless right so we integrated on chain payments uh we integrated yeah this, this lightning address payment solution um that works super 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 easy for creators um and what we then spent the last three months on three, four months on is, is a migrating geyser over to an Oster. So every geyser project right now has its own end pub. And so what that does is that it does many, many things. So first of all, <clears throat> it makes the project more censorship resistant because now you can take the private key of your project. And if, you know, if the project gets shut down on geyser, you can always take it somewhere else if you wanted to, like, and it creates the potential, creates the potential for say other crowdfunding platforms. To, to sprout up and start pulling projects from Geyser. Like if there's someone else who's like, I'm gonna create another project, another crowdfunding project. Geyser, Geyser has been compromised, right? We've become too successful, too complacent, we've been captured. Well, now another platform can just start taking projects, uh, start viewing uh, activity, the, the all the project data and displaying it in their own platform. And even if we were to censor them, that data exists across not surreal. So that is great for censorship resistance, but also great for creators because it allows them to reach more people because every time they write an entry or an update, that can spread across Noster. And that means more viewership, more funding, more uh, more attention and so forth. So we spent quite a bit of time on that, but we have to still iron out, iron out some things. 
But we're planning to integrate more Nostra features like notes, uh, posts uh, on Geyser so we can write quick updates. Uh, and as I mentioned, trying to learn more about how, how we can integrate subscriptions in some smart ways uh, and enable, you know, say if you're a subscription to Knut's podcast, you know, you get to see some, 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 some uh, paywall content. Um, Me dancing. Like you get access yes, to my only fans. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Who wouldn't want to see no dancing, right? See the uh, whole beard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's stuff that you can do there. And the point is to kind of learn from what's been happening in the creator economy, whether it's Kickstarter, you know, Patreon. And and we see overall as uh, you know, on the in the world of the internet is just the the power of creators, right? Like I, I find it just I find this so fascinating. Just to think about how much the world has changed in the last, say, you know, thirty years, to the thanks to the internet, right? You, you have first you had first you had the birth of social media, right, uh, with Twitter, with Facebook, around twenty or so years ago. Then five years after that, you had crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and GoFundMe. It's like, oh, now you can receive money. You know, send a link to Twitter or to Facebook. People, people follow you through the social media play platform, they click on your project and then they fund you on these other platforms. Then you, got, <clears throat> then you had content platforms like YouTube arise, or YouTube, Spotify, and all these creators that were creating great content, they didn't just want to send them to a, uh, like a, co a go Kickstarter or GoFundMe, they want to send them to, to a place where they can actually subscribe and pay recurring payments. And that's where Patreon, OnlyFans, Substack, Gum Gumroad, all these are subscription-based, well, Gumroad maybe not so, so much, but the others are all subscription-based models that allow the creator to, to monetize in a way that they can through just a YouTube channel, right? With YouTube, with YouTube, you you can make you know thousands of dollars if your video gets millions of views. But if you don't get millions of views, if you don't have millions of subscribers, it's really hard to 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 make a living as as a creator, as a content creator, as a creator in general. Um, and and so and so you know there's all sorts of models right there's subscription there is there's advertisements uh, there's there's donations uh, and so uh, and so it's an ecosystem that is in development and you know there's all sorts of experiments happening but now with Bitcoin you have an even more powerful tool because with Bitcoin money flows a lot quicker you don't have to put in your credit card details you 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 have you know some even a wallet on your home browser um, like Albi you have you can send funds not through Kickstarter. Like you guys have a Geyser Lightning address, right? Which is freedom at geyser.fund. And someone types it in the wallet of Satoshi. They, they, they don't have to go to geyser.fund to fund you, right? It's an incredibly powerful property of inter interoperability. Like you can send money ubiquitously from wherever. And, and this Lightning address is the key funding identifier. And it's just, it's like a hundred X better than using your credit card. Yeah, and uh, as cr as creators ourselves, we we I mean, we know that we're we're playing this game like uh, we're we're trying to do it seriously. So we're trying to run it somewhat as a business, and uh, you know, having sponsors and all that. And we, of course, everyone who has sponsors says, "I only sp I use all of my sponsors' product products." And there's some ball shaving kit and some stuff like that. That there's no way in hell that they're actually using it, but. <laughs> But we actually like have so many synergies with all the uh, all the people that uh, that have sponsored us. Like, like we really, really like and use their products because that this is the Bitcoin ecosystem. Everything's connected, right? And we we all benefit from helping one another. And it's such a like we're really trying to tap into that and live the live that meme as well because it's so powerful. We don't have to compete. We can just collaborate. All of us. It's uh, it's just fantastic. Yeah, we, it's a free we market went together, on steroids. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah. We talked to Stefan Levera yesterday, and we we uh, went down a funny part of the rabbit hole. If you if you um, envision hyper Bitcoinization, and uh, you know, number go up forever, and all of this, I can see a uh, subscription model that is possible with Bitcoin, but not possible with fiat, and that is a one-time payment if <laughs> for a lifetime subscription. I mean, that exists in fiat also, but it's very rare because you have to put up a hell of a lot of money for that to make any type of sense at all. 
But in Bitcoin, given that uh, the receiver believes Bitcoin to go up forever, uh, the bar is much lower to where you just send a Bitcoin donation once and there you go. That's that's all the Bitcoiner needs. Uh, and I, I think that's just so fascinating to think about. Like, what what happens then? Like, do we just fund one another once and then we just be awesome to one another after that? Like, is that it? Like, how does that work? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question, man. It's, it's something I've been thinking about, about a lot. Like, what is the cadence like? Why, how is that important? And in fiat, it's, it's different than in Bitcoin. But in Bitcoin, I feel like uh, as much as I like to believe that, that Bitcoin will go up forever, the human brain, the experience of the human brain is such that actually that, that will take time, right? And, and because Bitcoin goes through these bear cycles and the bear cycles feels like, feel like infinity as well, to some extent. And so four years, you have to think four years ahead of time of what that might be worth and maybe multiply that by, by, some, by some amount. But yeah, but we don't, but we don't know uh, how much that, 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 that multiplier actually is. And in any case, in four years, depending also on what age you are, four years can be a hell of a lot of time. And so you might not be thinking that far ahead. But for those who have low time preference, uh, then yeah, definitely, uh, I can see that happening. Yeah, the, the real power there, as I see it, is that you can have both. You can have both a, a cash flow inflow and a cash outflow. And then you can also have your, like, your stack growing from one time payments every now and then. Like the, the one does not, uh, <laughs> You exclude know, the others. exclude the others. No, no, because uh, you you can have all of it. All it requires is like, uh, okay, I need this to to exist during these cycles, but uh, to survive after the cycle and to thrive after the cycle, I need to have this mindset of, as well. I need to, yeah. So all of these basic basic uh, theories of economics that I was taught as a child, when you can still uh, make money from interest by by just saving money in a bank account no one can do that anymore but we were told like uh pay 10 percent to yourself save 10 percent for yourself or whatever you make which is very good advice if you're on a bitcoin standard if if you're on a fiat standard it's not because you're just going to lose that money over time but 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 it posted some fascinating questions like uh makes you think about what yeah it's a weird future to go into but but like I would say like when you're talking about like the internet changing things over the last thirty years, that I mean post lockdowns, it has been more powerful than ever with these uh, this thing for instance Riverside we us just talking to one another by the click of a button and recording high quality content, of course yeah highest quality content since it's us but uh, it's it's absolutely amazing that we can do this and that we can do Bitcoin. <laughs> back and forth it's it's truly erases borders in a way that just wasn't there before totally man totally and and there's and there just like people were mind blown about say airbnb like you know you can't think of airbnb as a as an idea as a business model uh b- before the internet and even when the internet was born it would have been inconceivable and even when the guys started that airbnb it's called airbnb because they, they you could rent air mattresses but they, they couldn't even conceive of how big it could be, right? And this is true for so much in technology. Like it's like it's a lot of just trial and error, people trying shit and stuff working, stuff not working, and then realizing actually there's something much, much greater. And um uh, and I think the same is true with, with Bitcoin and you know, Bitcoin businesses as well. There's 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 so much potential growth and new things that can be done with Bitcoin uh as a as a monetary technology, but as also as technology, technology, as like programmable money that we that we are able to, you know, uh, self custody, send at our will, and yeah, it's gonna be super interesting. I mean, it is already super interesting, but who knows what even we can ideate, uh, you know, magically forward 10, 20 years. Yeah, just as a communications network, it enables so much, like. Uh ways of interacting with one another that simply weren't possible before. Like, it used to be a hassle to send a small payment from one country to another, or or a large payment for that <laughs> for that matter. But now it isn't. Like, not at all. It's super duper simple. 
uh, uh, yeah, changing the world one pleb at a time. <laughs> Absolutely, and maybe just to, to to talk a bit about Geyser here as well, because you know we realized actually only a few months after we started building Geyser that that Kickstarter and GoFundMe were only accessible in thirty countries, right? So like if you're in Brazil or Nigeria, you couldn't create a project on and raise money on GoFundMe, for example. And and we realized like that's bizarre, <laughs> like that's absolutely bizarre. This, um, and then Patreon was able to figure something out, but it's super super challenging to to do it. You have to be KYC if you're you know in third world countries and so forth. But it's still a horrible experience. So Bitcoin really really like saves saves mainly that because at the end of the day in the West we still we still do have a lot of these tools and they're pretty pretty powerful and useful. But in in other parts of the world um, where the banking system isn't as, as sophisticated, and then also it's not even just that, but the, the a lot of the financial infrastructure that is that exists today, PayPal, Stripe, they there's sort of re, there's massive regulatory capture and they're not really allowed to extend their services beyond because they're deemed to be high risk, right? So uh, I actually used to work in a, in, a, in, a, in a bank and remember once hearing this thing, oh, but we cannot allow our, 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 our payment channels to open to, you know, this country in, in Africa because, you know, there could be terrorism. So this, this excuse is just, it, it's, just a, it's just an insane way of just perpetrating financial apartheid, right? That's what um, Ray Youssef calls it. I think it's absolutely spot on, a financial apartheid is, uh, a really good way of putting it because it's 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 really kind of dividing the world into different camps saying no you cannot use digital money and now we have bitcoin it's like well now everyone gets digital money <laughs> thankfully <laughs> yeah yeah fascinating stuff the show is sponsored by amber app the number one bitcoin exchange in the southern hemisphere and the reason we partnered with amber app is the people that work there especially izzy my favorite hippie if you haven't seen it already, check out our episode with Izzy. It'll show you exactly why we just had to partner with Amber App. Izzy focuses on the orange glowing light, and so do we. And we think you should too. Amber App will be launching their version 2.0 soon and rolling out globally. They'll be including a non-custodial on-chain wallet, an anonymous lightning wallet, a fiat wallet, and an exchange all in one. It's going to be a super app. It's like WeChat, but without the CCP. So stay tuned, follow Amber App on X, and check out their website for more information at amber.app. Next up, Wasabi Wallet, the privacy by default, open source, non-custodial Bitcoin wallet with CoinJoin built in. It's the easy to use, comprehensive, affordable way to make your coins private. Oh, if you want the privacy of your Bitcoin, don't be an idiot samurai. Use a Wasabi Wallet now. So check out wasabiwallet.io and download Wasabi today. Yeah, why don't we take this in the in the the direction we're usually supposed to start with, but we always skip because Knut has ADD. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Mick? Uh, your 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 introduction and, and uh, how yeah, you got Yeah, sorry about that, Mick. No, well, good man. I love it. Uh, so, um, what's my background? So, so, so I studied anthropology. And, and economics in university. So I've always been really interested in people and economics and sort of human systems. And I ended up for after that, after that working for some nonprofits and ended up in, in working in Nepal after the earthquake. I was, was you know, very idealistic kids, like, you know, wanting to save the world. And I realized that we, as we were there, you know, we were having shit impact, you know, very, very little impact we actually were having. But what, what, what I realized, the impact was was being had was with technology. Like people had their smartphones and they were able to communicate with each other across very far, fast distance, distances and send each other money. You know, they had, you know, people in very rural areas of Nepal that were able to receive remittances from their their friends and family, say in, in, uh, uh, in, in Dubai, making money, sending money back. So. To me, it was just, I was just completely mind boggled at just how powerful technology is. And I think Jeff Booth calls it the fact that technology is deflationary, right? That prices just go down and, um, and it has this democratizing effect and wealth generating effect for all of humanity. And I just, for my first time in my life, even though I had studied economics, even though, you know, I was told, you know, 
by you know, about the power of technology. I didn't really, I really only understood it then, like how 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 powerful it can be in, in terms of bringing up everyone. Um, and then a, a few months after that, I learned about Bitcoin. I learned I learned about it, and I, I had been introduced to Bitcoin in 2010 in my university dorm room. My my friend told me, "Hey, Mick, let's buy some bitcoins," and I immediately thought, I don't know how, but I just my association was this is sort of virtual money that anyone can fuck with. And then when I learned about it again in 2016, 2017, I was like, oh, wow, this is this is money that nobody can fuck with. <laughs> uh, and I, I love that. I love the idea of of, 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 of something that, no, that cannot be tampered with, whether it's governments, whether it's corporations. And what really lured me in as well, as well were the memes, like seeing all these crazy memes of these crazy people on Twitter uh, saying these, you know, like just all these pepe, uh, uh, memes, all these memes about, you know, not being able to, and the Neo meme really, really got to me, like the Neo meme, you know, are we going to be able to sell Bitcoin for a million dollars? No, when you're ready, you're not going to have to. At that point, I was like, okay, these guys are either crazy or they've understood something so, so powerful. And luckily enough, I was in a time of my life that I was sort of humble and open to, to being wrong because everything had been taught, you know, not everything, but a lot, all of economics, you know, as uh, a, a lot of it <laughs> had to go down the trash and be challenged. Um, but luckily, anthropology, although it has a lot of its flaws, helped me to kind of basically say, okay, what if these guys are right? What, let's consider the possibility that they're right and, um, and that Bitcoin really is, is, is money. And, um, and so, yeah, so with that, I went down the rabbit hole and then I ended up, and I, at that point I was working then in, in UX design, user research, um, kind of the design side of, of, of technology. Because I really thought at that point that you know uh, uh, there's something quite quite good, uh, like morally good about building building tools for people. And I think building is, I think what you guys doing, for example, education. That's building, like that's absolutely building. So so powerful. And then there's tools, and then there's information, and then all of this can help rise humanity. Uh, I think, and so. After that, I worked in so many different companies. I worked in fintech. Uh, I worked in, uh, and ended up also working in crypto for a year, which was really in, in a sort of Ethereum startup. God forbid. Um, but uh, it was, it was. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> I lash myself every morning. Um, but no, I, it's funny. I, actually, I was very much a Bitcoin, and I was like, but let's see here what we can learn. And I, there's definitely a lot, a lot, a lot of products, a lot of great tools that that have been built in Ethereum. There's um, there's all sorts of things that uh, I thought inspired me. There were some cool crowdfunding platforms out there that I was like, why is this not in Bitcoin? You know, why are these these tools not don't exist in Bitcoin? And so and so I was like, that's it. You know, I'm done here. I'm gonna start building them. I'm gonna start building them a lot of these tools, uh, a crowdfunding platform on Bitcoin because it's needed and we need a creator economy on Bitcoin. So yeah, I decided to kind of uh, quit my other job and just start focusing on on Geyser at the point. Super, super thankful for for this, and, uh, and, and super excited every day to be to be helping build on Bitcoin. It's an absolute liber- privilege. Yeah, super cool, cool story. And uh, yeah, as you say, like uh, an open mind is important, but it's uh, useless if you're not intellectually honest. Like uh, the, as Terry Pratchett said, the pro- problem with an open mind is that people will come along and try to put stuff in it. Like yeah. Ethereum, like <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, uh, absolutely. So I, that, that's that's what that's what I did. Sort of, I was there, open and tried it, but I was still very cynical of it. Like uh, I, I realized that it, it, when I was in there, that everyone had their head in the sand. Like as soon as, if you try to mention Lightning to a guy in Ethereum, he will sort of literally just put his head in the sand. He was like, act as if that didn't exist. They never talk about it, right? And their solutions, their their layer twos. Ha- are built on blockchains. They have their own shit coins as well. Um, it's 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 an absolute aberration of 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 everything. It's like they're proprietary, closed. They have several layer twos that don't speak to each other. Like, and I started re- realizing what this was. Just like a casino of sorts. With just um, a lot of gambling. Just a lot of gambling. A lot of you know JPEGs. And at first, sometimes you know it can be fun. But then it's like, what the fuck are we doing here, guys? Like, what's the point? <laughs> like, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to really like make this a, a, a better world where we create money for the entire of humanity? Are we trying here to, to to change the world and make the world a better place through through sound money? And 
that just that idealism, those those eth that ethics is completely lacking, right? Or it's it's very superficial because they use the word decentralization as a as a as a surrogate for 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 freedom, and it's not because it's not true decentralization. No. So yeah, so I, I was completely out of place, and that's why I was you know I wasn't yeah I wasn't very welcome. This pisses me off so much because, like, uh, first of all, Ethereum isn't decentralized at all. So they're pretending that the users are decentralized somehow, or in like this world computer narrative that they had and everything. But like, the decentralization in in Bitcoin is an unfortunate means to a much greater end, which is sound money for the world, uh, censorship resistant, peer to peer, all that good stuff, uh, and you can have them in your head. But if we it's unfortunate that we need the decentralization because the decentralization makes it slow and clunky. Uh, but we need it because we can't trust people with money because absolute crap corrupts and makes everything crap and all this crap. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of, of, of the Bitcoin, uh, both blockchain and the proof of work, right? Is that it's, it's reliable. That's the only feature that it needs because reliability is it's fucking hard to get. And the only way to get it is through a lot of work and uh, shit everything else, right? Because that's the key trade-off. Yeah, and you can only get it once because all it is is a number on the internet that doesn't change. And any any copy of that is redundant by definition. Uh, so yeah, well, there's that. Uh, here's the, the thought I had before that I lost about the um, <laughs> uh, when the ADD kicked in. Like, I think a lot of pro the problems with these um, older things like PayPal and uh, GoFundMe and whatnot, and uh, also Robinhood for that matter. Like when when they uh, when the whole uh, GameStop stock thing, people were hodling and using the hodl meme and all this, and then they all got uh, uh, then they were all surprised when they were rug pulled. And like you could have done this with something that they couldn't take away from you. You can do the exact same on Bitcoin over and over again, and you guys just don't realize that that's a, a fact. <laughs> and but but the thing I thought about was with, with the other things uh, is that a, a lot of people that, that uh, you, you in a lot of cases you need to be a company in order to make money. So for an individual, an individual needs to start a company. In, in the country they, they're in. And that's usually a tedious and quite pricey thing to do from, for most people. If, if you're 18 years old and you just finished school and like that's not something you just go and do for most people. And th so then if you start making some serious money, you can get into a lot of tax trouble if you don't, uh, if you don't have a company. In Bitcoin, there's no difference between a company and a person. It's just a fucking telegram group. And that's it. <laughs> you don't need a board. You don't need <laughs> accounting. You don't need anything. You just need, you know, your brain and maybe some other people, maybe not. Like, that's, all, that's true everywhere now. And the regulators will have to, to, to realize that that's the world we're living in already. You, know, you, you, you hit the freaking nail on the head, man. That is so fucking powerful. And, and, and I remember... Actually, Jack Dorsey saying exactly this in a, in a conference. Uh, and that's what, one of the key triggers that, that helped me also by Star Geyser, because he just sort of helped me understand how powerful this was. He said, literally, anyone can start a company with Bitcoin. You don't need a banking license to be a crowdfunding platform. He didn't say this, but you don't need a banking license to operate. You don't need to apply to a bank. You don't need, you need, you, it's permissionless. You can just start building a product. And, and, and transmitting payments, receiving payments, et cetera, without, without a banking approval. And to think that GoFundMe, Kickstarter, when they started, like I have immense respect for them as well, because when they started, they must have, they must have gotten some sort of massive partnership. Like they must have paid so much money to get these, these banking partners to, to do what they were looking for. Um, they, it's it's an, it's a, it's it's insane just the amount of effort probably months years to get this bank banking partnership in place to us nothing <laughs> we just just connected to bitcoin we just connected to bitcoin right and uh, at very very low 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 cost and infrastructure 
Um, luckily, we also were, were, were able to, to build on top of, a, of a already existing Bitcoin infrastructure like Voltage, which is awesome for, for routing payments and running a node that really helps as well. Um, but yeah, it's regulators have no idea like what's coming. There's going to be a, uh, I could, an explosion of just products, services, tools <laughs> that you can plug and play on the internet. Uh, yeah, and when when they hop in and try to regulate it, it will already o- be in place. Like it's already there, and it's already so obvious that it's a better solution. It's like when they tried to stop uh, IP telephony, like uh, <laughs> uh, the all the uh, all the phone companies had to surrender at some point because it's just obvious that the internet is better than than using dinosaur shit. Like, uh, and the same is true for money, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. The show is also sponsored by Geyser, the portal to the creator economy on Bitcoin. On Geyser, creators can monetize their work through their communities in a social and engaging way, and you can send sats to your favorite projects. They have loads of new features, including new reward options, giving creators and supporters new ways to connect and grow together. Geyser Fund is the best way to support our show directly with Bitcoin, and we have a fabulous lightning address freedom at geyser.fund. So whether you're a creator or supporter, check out geyser at geyser.fund today. The show is also sponsored by Orange Pill App, the Bitcoin-only social network where you can stack friends who stack sats. You can connect with your favorite Bitcoiners on the app, like Safedina Moose, Peter McCormack, or Natalie Brunel. Make local connections and find all the nearby meetups, see what's going on in your area, and connect with Bitcoiners around you. And now, with a brand new merchant section, it's easier than ever to find and connect with local businesses that accept Bitcoin. The best part about Orange Pill App is that you know that it's high signal because you're paying for Orange Pill App, and so is everyone else. There are no Asian ladies asking you how your trade is going on Orange Pill App because it's not a trading app. It's a dating app. Is it a dating app? So download the Orange Pill App on Apple or Android, send us a DM, and start building your local network of Bitcoiners. Sure. Well, maybe we can take this into kind of a more philosophical direction or kind of the the direction of how things look to you going forward. Geyser, of course, has has one role, is, is filling a, a specific niche, this this crowdfunding and, and all this. But how are you how are you feeling the the Bitcoin situation right now? Uh, how are how are you feeling about the the future? Are you optimistic? Yeah man, good really good question. I've been loving the the bear markets. It's been just building and it's been, as I say, yeah, bear markets are for builders. And it's amazing that we've done so much. Uh, everything we've done so far has been in a bear market. So in some way, I've, I have no idea what to expect um, uh, as to what the next bull market will, will look like. Uh, we know Bitcoin works through science cycles and it's, you know, it's going to probably do its thing, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think. I think it, it could. It, it's interesting. I, I, I think with this whole ETF stuff, it's a cha- It's possible that I. I think the way that it's been approved, uh, I'm, I'm quite cynical with this stuff, right? So, the reason it's been approved is because at the end of the day, Bitcoin, in as an ETF, is really just a speculative asset, right? So, it's basically been approved by the the Wall Street Bros, right? It's like just let us gamble with Bitcoin regulators, right? And the regulators are like. Ah, uh, we don't like Bitcoin, but fine, we'll let you do that because in any case, they make the capital gains, right? Every time the data gets traded and they make money from that too. Um but but I think it's just again Bitcoin doing its thing and sort of being this mirror where everyone gets to see what they want and and then just expanding its its breadth, its expanding its its um its adoption in all forms. But ultimately, what I am interested in, and I definitely follow Ray Yusuf here quite a lot, is I see Bitcoin as as money, as like as 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 peer to peer electronic cash that people should use to trade, to exchange, that nobody can dictate, right? What people are trading, and I, I, I that's what I'm for, and that's why that's what we, we call Geyser, and I think it's you know that's what we have to really keep pushing and trying to get Bitcoin as, as a legal standard as many countries as possible, because that's what Bitcoin is meant to be. So <clears throat> although I don't, I don't really give a shit about the ETF per se, I see it as, a, again, a, a further infiltration tool by Bitcoin to increase its own adoption 
And uh, and yeah, it's possible that it'll, it'll even lead to even greater highs with the bull market and that people will get wrecked and, and try to realize, okay, what the fuck is this? And start paying attention and start doing the research and listening to Knut's and Luke's podcast. Um, so that's sort of, I don't know, I see that as the same, the same, that the same, same thing happening, right? The same uh, cycle of uh, greater att attention, greater awareness, you know, correct education uh, building and, and so forth. And this is just like a further escalation of that, which is incredible. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, in terms of, I don't know if that sort of what answers the question in terms of where we're going, but uh, I think, I think that's I think that's that. I'm not sure in terms of numbers what what we should target. I've got no to me. No, that, but that's great. Like, um, there are so many different angles to view Bitcoin from. Like, some view it as love it as a savings technology, and you, as you say, you're in on Team Cash and the international frictionless payments. And there's like just so many different ways to to look at this thing and and uh, and learn from it. Totally. It's great saving technology, absolutely. But if we don't use it as, as a means of payment, um, oh, we're missing it's, uh, it's going to die, I think. Yeah. I'm afraid it's going to, yeah. I don't know that. I, I don't know if it's going to die, but, but, uh, but we're, we're, you're sort of missing out on a, on a great feature, a great functionality of the thing. Like that, that's what it was built for to be teleportable. That's one of the reasons why we value it and can save in it. Like I guess, right? We have we have this motto at Geyser, which is "Let the Sats flow." I don't know if you've heard, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's really trying to express our belief that, and yeah, who knows if it'll it'll die or not? Probably not. Of course not. But uh, but yeah, this idea that like Sats need to flow for Bitcoin to can gain more adoption. Like bit Bitcoin in more people's hands is spreads the likelihood of 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 Bitcoin and actually being used as, as means of exchange. Um, and in a world where, where, you know, say Bitcoin is legal tender everywhere, well, wouldn't you want to, you know, you probably still want to remain very conservative in terms of your spending habit. It doesn't mean go degen, right? So going degen is like on the other extreme and then hodling is complete other extreme uh, where you're just completely just holding. And I think letting the stats flow somewhere, you know, somewhere in the middle where you're not just throwing money at JPEGs, you're, you're spreading Bitcoin through donations or through purchases, which helps to spread Bitcoin further uh, into more hands. Spend and replace. Spend and replace. That's yeah. a, good, a good way to look at it. Uh, and yeah, as far as legal tender goes, like we here on the Freedom Footprint show are against legal tender laws we think <laughs> i i think i speak for luke as well that we think that uh anyone should be able to transact in whatever currency they want like um uh, so i i prefer the melee approach to the uh to the bukele approach there yeah yeah, yeah totally totally agree. i mean fiat was born uh right as, uh, as as a threat like you have to use this right that you have to use it by decree it only works because it's forced upon us. So you don't need to force me to use Bitcoin. <laughs> like I'll use it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you. So I urge everyone listening to this to go and try to use Geyser. And the best way to do that is, of course, to support the Freedom Footprint Show. And we have the best like uh, uh, address in the world, don't we, Luke? Yeah, just Freedom. Uh, couldn't Free pass that one up. Freedom at Geyser the Fund. Freedom at Geyser.fund. How awesome is that? So so don't forget to like, subscribe, brush your teeth, and uh, uh, here's me begging for money, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all Super seriousness, subtle, I mean I mean uh, we we appreciate the support and that's and that's just it. I mean the the, the this this show is awesome. I love getting to to do it, to talk to people, to make connections and yeah. Uh, the support of our of our viewers and listeners, your support, it, it yeah, it, it's the the best the best way. So, uh, yeah, if if you like what you've been hearing, if you like what we've been doing, please go to our Geyser page, Geyser dot fund slash project slash freedom, or our or our address is freedom at Geyser dot fund, and uh, yeah, send us some sats or 
Well, we're, we're going to do more with the the page, especially as new features come out with with Geyser. Like we're in this for the for the long haul, and and we're going to take advantage of absolutely everything that that's coming out. So, yeah, follow along and and check out Geyser for everything that you're you're looking at. Like uh, see what other creators are on there, and uh, uh, if if you have something that you you want to to do, uh, yeah, make a make a Geyser page and. Uh, start spreading the word on Noster, on Twitter, all the all the places, right? So yeah, that's it. That's the pitch. Yeah. And Mick, you'll have to you'll have to tell us whenever the new features come come out so we can start so I can start dancing in my underwear. I will I will yeah we'll make sure to do a partnership for that. Yeah and uh let you know beforehand. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. But yeah look and also if there's any feedback we're also super open to feedback and questions or, or suggestions also feel free to reach out to me and uh um yeah the, the the basic belief is really that everyone's a creator right everyone has ha- can contribute to bitcoin in some way whether it's doing a podcast uh whether it's writing a book or uh or dancing in the street waving a bitcoin banner people are gonna be willing to send you some stats for your awesome, awesome work. So uh, that's really that's really the, the idea here, that uh, anyone can contrib- contribute to Bitcoin. The, speaking of dancing naked in the street with the Bitcoin banner, did you see when uh, uh, Joan, Joan Nakamoto uh, showed his Q, QR code bar tab like, <laughs> to Twitter and people started ordering stuff for him at the restaurant and no paying way. for it? I missed uh, that. No, that's awesome. uh, it was fantastic. So he just got more and more food. Him and his girlfriend. They couldn't eat it all because, like, uh, yeah, it was great. Speaking <laughs> of what can be done, right? Bitcoin, insane. Yeah, it's insane. Like, I remember in the early days of social media, when people realized that they could like meme big gatherings into existence, and all of a sudden, like, the authorities didn't know what to do because all of a sudden, two hundred thousand people are gathering for a large party in some park somewhere. Uh, uh, and that was in the news every now and then. And uh, then I guess Facebook and the likes of it figured out ways to make that not happen. But right. now with you know Noster and and um, Bitcoin, yeah, <laughs> we should, we can literally change the world. Like yeah, yeah. super powerful, super yeah. powerful tools. Yeah. So yeah and any uh, uh final thoughts before we move on Mick? like is there anything we have left out here that we no, should have been, been talking about it's been, no, it's been awesome to chat guys uh i have not not much else to, to, to say i mean yeah thanks again for for the invite thanks for the really love what you guys are doing keep keep doing the, the hard work the good work keep inviting awesome guests and uh um yeah looking forward to to keep growing with you guys and uh, yeah. spreading the word of bitcoin right back at you Mick. we love what you're doing too uh so so check out geyser.fund that's the address right yeah that's uh, it. or geyser.com as well maybe geyser, no geyser.fund only at the moment oh get the geyser.fund yeah. yeah so yeah and, soon, uh, soon and where can where can people find you uh, i'm metamic14 on twitter uh, on telegram uh you can reach out to me mick at geyser.fund if you have any thoughts questions feedback or suggestions and uh yeah super open to hearing back fantastic looking forward to a long and prosperous relationship let's do it all right fantastic thanks a lot for joining us mick and this has been the freedom footprint show thanks for listening